Hi, it's Sandy Parker and welcome to Crafting for Almost Everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to make a bunny bag for all of your Easter treats. I hope you'll stay tuned. Well, I'm probably going to show you two different ways to make a bunny bag. This one is one using a pre-existing bag, got a little bunny tail, and um, using this little, um, it's called a belly band, to hold the bag shut. And it slides right back on and under the eyes so that the ears are where you want them to be on your rabbit. So that's one system. And then the other system is by creating the bag from scratch. Now I'll walk you through this bag and then the, the measurements for all of the, um, the pieces that we're going to decorate with. I'll go into detail on those, but I'm just gonna show you how to make the bag. Well, I'm gonna show you how to make both bags. The most important part about this is how you're going to fold your bag. And what you're going to do is you're going to lift this. I think it's called the gusset. This is on the back of your bag. And you're going to fold the top down so that it lines up with the fold inside your bag like that. And then you're just going to fold your bag. That's the extent of the tricky part of making this. Then to make the body, all I did was I took a die, and the bigger your circle die, the better. You don't want it to be bigger than your bag. I made mine a little smaller than my bag because I thought the the size of the rabbit, it, it didn't make sense if the face was this big to make a body that was as wide as the bag. So I just made my body um, the si you know the size of the circle that I die cut and let me give you the dimensions on this so that you know at the widest point this circle is four and a half inches across then I just took my paper trimmer I put my circle in and I just whacked off the bottom like that so that you end up with one straight edge and I wanted that so that the very bottom of my rabbit is is straight on the bottom of my bag like that I'm not going to make another one of these bags, but I am going to walk you through all the steps to make it so that you know what you're doing. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to make our own bag from scratch. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to take a 12 by 12 piece of white cardstock. We're going to basically make the same rabbit. We just are going to use, uh, we're going to start without a bag. So in case you don't have a white lunch bag, you can do this with cardstock. So you're going to start with 12 by 12 cardstock and you're going to need to score it. You're going to take a 12 by 12 inch piece of cardstock. Actually, I got a little boo boo of green on it. We're just going to ignore that because it's going to be the inside of our bag. You're going to line your paper up in your scoreboard and we're going to score it at one and a half inches and at eight inches. And then, I'm gonna do that one again, I don't think I did it enough of a score. Then you're gonna turn it once. And this time we're going to score it at four and three eighths. So in my, on my scoreboard I have eight scores between. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight between each inch. So four and three eighths is one, two, three. I wanted to show you that because sometimes people get confused about unusual markings. Okay, then next is five and seven eighths. So that would be one line before the six inch. Ooh, jumped out of my track there. Hold on. Then ten and a quarter. A ten and a quarter is two notches past the ten. And eleven and three quarters. I'm gonna have to move this bar. <laughs> Sorry. So it's this very last little bit. Ooh. 
I always struggle doing these little these scores that are just a little bit of paper. I just keep jumping out of that track. Okay. I'm going to turn that around and I'm going to score it on the quarter inch mark because I think it'll make it easier for me to make sure that I have a good score on that because I had a little issue with it. Jeez. My skill set on that score was not the greatest. But I want to make sure that you see how you can uh, still make a, a bunny bag after you've made all these mistakes like I have. So then we're going to fold all of our scores and burnish them. We're going to leave this square and then we're going to cut off all the rest on the top. Well, that's lucky where my boo-boo is with the green. So what you're going to do is, I'll just, uh, I'll explain it to you this way. Down here is that one and a half inch score right here. Then up here is that eight inch score. From the eight inch score up, all the way, oh, no, excuse me, from the eight inch score all the way over to this box on the far right. So if you're a little quarter inches on your left, that's that weird little score, you're gonna cut everything, including that little quarter inch, all the way up to that four inch, or that last box. So let me get rid of all of this. And when you cut this paper, you're going to want to get rid of your score lines if you can. It would be better if I use my long bladed scissors for this. Let me grab them. And I'm also going to grab my corner rounder. The longer your blades are, the easier this part will be. Because you want to cut out... Well, I'm just going to start from this end because it'll be easier. You're going to get rid of the score line for this section. You don't want that, you want to cut so that the score line is gone. Then we're going to cut all the rest of this piece off, including the score lines, because you don't want that weird score line showing up in your bag. Then this is going to be the flap that we're going to that we're going to make into the face of our rabbit. So I'm going to use my corner rounder and I'm going to corn corner round the bottom to like that. I'll get that corner a little bit better. That's better. We are going to get rid of this little piece the little quarter inch score up to that first score line. And then I'll start drawing so you can see what we want to do. I'm going to make sure I get rid of all that weird paper. Okay. Then we're going to cut up to the score line. on this piece and up to the score line on this one and I'll show you how this will look in just a second. You want to cut out those cut the score lines if you can. When you make these cuts if you have any mark or let me score line left over on this side, cut it out because you don't want that in there. Same on this side. If you have any little, if you can still see the score line, I don't know if you can see that, but I can. You just want to trim that little bit off because you don't want that to be there. Then what we're going to do is we're going to cut these on an angle. Just so that when we put our 
bag together that these are going to be able to be hidden in our bag. And then back to this one, same thing. You're going to want to cut a little bit of an angle up to the cut. These aren't going to be seen, so it doesn't matter if it's not perfect. You know, if someone's going to look at it and go, oh my god, that's ugly. Don't worry about it. No one's ever going to see it. It's going to be hidden inside your bag. I think I keep calling this a box, but it's a bag. So I'm going to rip these pieces out, and I'll lay it down so you can see what our piece is going to look like. Then, okay, so it's going to look like this. Let me hopefully you can see that top section. This is where our, our uh, we're going to put tear tape. I'm going to put tear tape on mine because I think it makes it easier to, um, to hold the bag together. So the next step you're going to do is on that little quarter inch, you're going to put your tear tape. And you want it to go from the bottom. We have one more little snip we need to do and then we're ready to put our bag together. And that snip is at the top in our little quarter inch slot right here. You just want to cut that down a little bit on an angle so that it makes it so that when you close your bag up you won't see that piece. So then I've really pushed it down well. I'm just going to take that backing off and sometimes I struggle to do that, so I figured I would just do it off screen. Okay, so here is our little score. All you have to do to make this work is you just close your box. Bag, it's a bag, not a box. There is that. So that's our bag. Now, to put the, the base together, all you do is you're going to put one flap down, and I'm going to use wet glue for this. What we're going to do is, now this is our top, don't forget, that's, that's what we're going to use to cover our box. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put one flap down like that. I get my wet glue. You're going to put glue wet glue underneath these side flaps. It's hard to do this so that you can see it. You're going to put glue all in that side flap like that. Then you're going to fold it down. Turn the box around. Put glue. Hopefully you can see this. I'm sorry if you can't because I know my See the glue is on there. You're going to fold that down and then you're going to put glue all over our bottom flap again on the inside and then you're going to fold our box onto it like that and it works best if you've got a roller that you can open your box and lay it inside like this just to make sure that it's all well adhered. And then you can just kind of pinch your box. Hold on, I gotta do this off camera. I keep saying box, it's not a box, it's a bag. If you kind of keep pinching it on the sides, you should be able to get it to lay almost flat. It depends on the weight of paper you use. I think this paper might be 110 pound, so it's kind of thick. But what you're going to want to do is you're going to play with the sides and kind of squeeze it so that you can get it to flatten toward the top so that when you close your lid, I'm trying to get this to be straight too, so that when we close the lid, I'm going to keep squeezing down as I go, that we'll be able to put our box lid down like this. So that's basically how it's going to look. Now 
I'm going to put some Velcro closure on mine so that I'll be able to um, close it and not have any problem with closing it basically. I want it to stay closed. So I've got these from the Dollar Tree and they're self-adhesive which makes it really nice. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put your glue, your Velcro dot, both of them, on the lid. Then you're going to close the lid like that. And my lid is not exactly straight but I don't care. And then you're going to open it like that and then your bag slash box is able to be velcroed shut. Now it's about decorations. And if you want to do the rabbit like I did it, basically you're going to get that circle punch and you're going to have the round piece for the body. I like this look because I want my rabbit to be round. I need to cut mine off a little bit more because um, my glue dot or my Velcro dot is right there. So I'm going to make mine a little bit shorter. I think I need to put it right there. Now I'm just going to make a line where I need to trim it off. And then we're going to just put that right there. And before I do that, I'm going to get ink and um, oh by the way I saw two different versions of these bunny bags and one was on mixed up craft and the other one was on May 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 made it and um, both have great merit and I would recommend you look at both of them first before you decide which one you like better but I'm Oh, maybe this is gray. Well, I don't know. I think I'm going to use this one. I think this is my gray. I found I have better luck with these when I'm trying to get just the edge inked. And the ink, or the, um, yeah, the, the ink I'm using is from Stampin' Up! It's called Going Gray. And I just wanted this to make sure that the edges of my rabbit are well defined and then I'll we'll go step by step after we put his body down we'll do step by step for his face so that you can get an idea of how he looks so that's going to be the body and I'm just going to leave that ink out and I'm going to put wet glue on the back of my body. You don't want to go to the edges because this is going to have um, it's going to it's going to be a little bit over the edges. So you don't want to you don't want to put glue. And then I glued it on upside down. <laughs> Man, this isn't my day. And then I didn't do the bottom, which of course I should have. So I'm just going to go across the bottom like a crazy person. I should have done it like that to begin with. Okay. So then we're just going to glue that in place. And I need to make sure that any glue that I have that seeps over, we need to get that off because we do not want glue hanging all over the place. So this is our stomach and we're going to, I need to put a little more glue right there or not. We'll just go with it. First thing we're going to do is feet. And I think what I'm going to do for my feet is I'm going to do two um, small ovals and these are stitch dies. So I'm going to do those with white cardstock and I'm just going to do two of those. And then um, for his cheeks, you can do round cheeks or you can do oval cheeks. I'll put this back. I used ovals on him and I just overlapped the two ovals. But I think in this next one, I think I'm going to do circles because if you don't have 
oval dies or oval um, um, punches. I want to make sure that you know what you can do. I do have this two and a half inch oval punch and I did use that for the ears on the first one but I'm not sure if I'm going to do that on the second one but I'll show you that in just a second. Then I'm going to do the two uh, circles for his cheeks. And I'm going to use one inch, no, it's a one and a quarter inch circle punch. And so I'm just going to, hopefully, okay, there's our cheeks. Then for his eyes, I used a one inch circle punch. I thought I'd do step by step with you on all the different ways I you can do this. And so we're going to need this one I just did. Uh, yeah. We're going to need two of these for his eyes. And then I'll show you how to do his um, ears. I have this cool little punch that looks, and I'm going to show you a couple other ones. I have this cool little punch. I don't know what it's called. It was made by Stampin' Up! and it's a very teeny tiny stamp or punch. It looks like that. And I'm going to use that in pink. I have some different shades of pink and I think I'm going to do this in the lighter shade of pink. And then I'll show you how I fixed his, this is his nose. Use the one inch circle for his feet. I'm going to do it in this brighter pink. And then for the little toes on his feet, I use my crocodile Big Bite. And I'll show you how I did that. If you have two settings in this part that's going to punch a hole, and I chose the larger one, which is 3 16 and it's right here. If you have a, a larger circle punch that punches just circle holes, that will work. But I'm going to, I think I'm going to fold my paper over because what I found the last time when I did this is it kind of curls the paper up when it punches it. And if you want it to come out nicer, I think it works better when you punch two holes at once. And I'll show you those when I figure out where they ended up. And then I'll show you what they look like. Do you see how they curl up? Well, they not only curl up, but there's two of them in each one of these. So I have to flatten them out and make sure that I separate the two, you know, the two pieces from each other. Make sure they all... My uh, crocodile also doesn't make really clean edges. So let's do our feet first. And in this, this time I decided to do feet that were oval. So that's our first thing is we're going to ink up our edges. Because I want it, I want the feet to stick out from the body, and the only way to do that is to ink the edges. I think. Got some paper sticking out, and this does have a stitched edge, which isn't exactly what I wanted, but I like the size of this one, and my other one that doesn't have stitches doesn't um, have this size. The sizes are kind of bigger. Those are our feet. And then I might as well do my eyeballs now that I'm working on the feet. And this is going to be a girl. Um, although the other one I did doesn't particularly look like a boy, um, I'm going to make this one look like a girl and I want to 
I want to give her eyelashes and I'm going to give her a, a hair, um, a floral wreath in her hair. So, well, she doesn't really have hair. Around her ears, I'm going to make a little floral piece. I used a 5 8 inch punch for her eye. I didn't think I did that big of one, but I guess I did. No, I didn't. I have a smaller one here somewhere. It's a quarter inch, maybe? Let me find out what size it is. Three eighths of an inch. That's for the center of her eyes. Ooh, that came flying out of nowhere. That would be her eyes, so we're going to glue those down. No two of these will ever be the same because you can put their eyes, like the black of their eye, in a different spot. That'll change the look. You can put the eyes closer or further apart, and that'll change the look. You can do all kinds of things that will change the look. Those are her eyes for now. Let's go back to her feet, and I'm going to use, this time I'm going to use the pink um, ink, and I'm just going to use sponge sugar. It's a distress oxide, and I'm going to just take my circle, and this time I'm just going to go around the edge. Okay, so when it comes to her toes, what we're going to do is I'm going to put all these little pink pieces on a piece that I'm going to use for um, distressing them. And if you don't like the way your little um, toes come out, you can always add more ink. And if you and if you got too much ink, you could always put um, you could always put more ink on. Or if you think you have too much ink, you can always take the um, punch and punch more circles out. So I'm going to just pick up, hopefully, one of these. Maybe it's not the best idea trying to use tweezers. I do have other tweezers, but I thought these ones would work. Ugh. Okay. There. There's our first foot. I'm going to put that right there, and then we're going to get our second foot. Add some glue. I'm using Brutus Monroe glue, if you didn't know that. Okay. So those are our feet. I think we can glue them in place. So, let's glue our feet on. And they're going to be, I'm going to point them in two different directions. Like I'm going to have them point outward. Then, I'm going to put her cheeks in this section right here. Like, they're going to go like right here. And in this one, I'm going to give her teeth. So I'll show you how I'm going to do teeth. I'm just going to use one of my uh, circle punches that I punched out for, I don't want to lose her nose, I, for her, um, this was going to be her cheek, but now it's not. So I'm going to make teeth, and I'll show you how I'm going to do this. It's very simple. I'm going to cut, and I'll give you the measurements in a second. I'm going to cut a straight line, and then I'm going to cut I'm going to make a box, basically. I'm making it bigger than I normally would do, but I'm going to use the extra to, to um, glue onto the back of her cheeks so that, you know, that you can... Okay, measurement. Her cheek is going to be... Hmm, it is a half an inch across at the bottom, and it is 
about the same inch tall, maybe a little bit taller, a little bit, you know, a little bit higher than that much, than, you know, than a half an inch. Then I'm going to make a notch. Well, I'm going to do it like that, and hopefully. I want her teeth to look kind of like Bucky Beaver. You know what I mean? And I'm only going to have a little bit of that sticking out. So let me get my sponge. So now I have this one. And I'm just going to get it into my pink. Because I want my cheeks to be almost like blushed. Take those back off. Move my teeth out of the way. And I'm going to try and basically ink. I'm going to ink the edges more, but I want the whole um, the whole cheek to have more pink on it. These are regular distress inks. They're not distress oxides that I'm using. Because I didn't want the distress oxide to be so uh, bold. Okay, I think her cheeks are pretty good. Then, all we're going to do with her cheeks is we're going to put a teeny tiny, I'm going to move this out of the way because you know I'm going to end up with pink ink on me. I'm just going to put a little bit of ink, not ink, glue. I'm going to put a little glue, which is more glue than I wanted. Oh, and her nose is coming over here. I'm going to put those two like that. That's going to be her cheeks. Then, okay, now I'm going to trim off that top and try to make my edges round again on the top. Okay, then we're going to put a little bit of glue. I'm just going to put a little dot right there. And I'm going to put this nose right there because those that's her cheeks and her nose you could if you wanted to you could put a little bit of foam behind her nose maybe I'll do that put a little foam square yeah let's do that I'm gonna put a mini dot under the nose because it's not really adhered to anything I'm gonna put one little mini glue dot right there that way her nose will stick out even more. Maybe too much. I don't know. Then her teeth we're going to glue behind little bucky teeth. I'm just going to put those so that they stick out. Let's see how much we want them to stick out the bottom. I'm going to make her teeth like that. Oh, before I do that, I know this sounds gross, but I'm going to distress them with the gray because if I don't, you won't be able to see them as compared to the, around the, um, you know, like they're laying on a white background. You won't be able to see them really well. So that's my teeth. Now, I need to do something with my eyes. Now before I do my eyes, I have to do my ears too, but before I attach my eyes, I'm going to give her some eyelashes. And here's how I'm going to do those. You can do these a couple different ways. If you have those scissors that make grass, I'll show you I have a pair. We will play with them first so that you know what they look like. This is what they look like. If you've never seen them, they're kind of cool. And here's how you'd use them. I'm going to make mine, I don't know how far up I can do this. So, I'm going to show you how you can do it if you have them or if you don't have them. If you don't have them, what you're going to do, and I'm just going to show you using what I've already cut. You're going to cut little slits 
in your paper because you want her eyelashes to be able to be curled. We're going to do that before we cut them out. And you don't want to put the eyes on until you've got, um, you've done this. So here's how I'm going to curl mine. I'm going to curl them so that they are I shouldn't have used heavyweight cardstock, let me tell you that first. And I'm going to cut mine off like that. And then I'll show you how you how you make it work. Oh, nose overboard. There's her teeth. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is we want to bend them so that they are curled. And if you didn't use heavyweight cardstock like I did, this would be easier to do. Oh, I forgot to, on the uh, other rabbit, I forgot to put his whiskers on. So I'll do that before we're done, too. Got to have whiskers on your rabbit. Okay, so then, once your lashes are nice and curled, then we're going to separate them, too. And I'm going to... I'm going to cut mine off, I'm not sure exactly how long this is, but let me measure them once I've cut them out. That one seems wider than this one. I'm going to put some tear tape behind my eyeballs, and then the goal is to make your eyelashes. You want to lay them in that foam tape so that our eyelashes are able to kind of stretch out over her eye. And I'm just going to bend them down again. So I think my eyelashes on that, or at least that eyelash, looks pretty good. So then we'll work on the other eye. And I think I'll just come back when I finish this eyelash because I don't think you need to see me go through 3,000 years of putting eyelashes on again. I think I'm going to put her cheeks right like that. So we'll put some glue on them. I'm going to put her cheeks down so that they're right at the bottom of the center of the bag, and then her teeth will stick down. You'll see this in a second. Her teeth will stick down a little bit. Then I'm going to put her eyes. I think I'm going to put foam maybe behind her eyes. I don't know. No, I think I'll just glue her eyes down, hold them down, and move her eyelashes around a little bit. I forgot to put the little dots on her no on her eyes. Because that makes her eyes look like she's looking at something. Okay. Oh good, I got some junk on it. How lucky. Now we're going to do whiskers, and I'll show you how to do whiskers, because I want to make sure I show you how to do everything. I'm going to cut. You can do this the exact same way. If you want to cut from the, um, with those, with these grass scissors, you can do that. But I'm going to just cut. I'm going to cut. One whisker, another whisker. And so at this point, I've got my eyelashes done and I've got my whiskers done. I made my whiskers on this one. I'm sure I showed you in the video with the scissors. Uh, they're a little bit um, more full than I wanted them to be, but I thought they were kind of cool anyway, so I'm leaving those the way they are. This one I made 
by cutting them out by hand and then tracing one and then cutting the other one out by using the one I traced. And I traced this with um, white gel pen. And hopefully you can see what that one looks like. This one is a little bit bigger on the base, like on the where the V goes in. So I'm going to work on that. I want to make sure that it's not so much bigger than the other one. I'm going to have to, I think I'm just going to try and trim it like that and hope that I don't make a big crazy mess out of this. So that's what these two look like. And let's see how close they are to looking like each other. This is my girl bunny. This is my boy bunny. I'm going to send these to my nephew and his wife for Easter. Of course, filling them up with treats. I might end up filling up um, one of these with dog treats because they have my um, great nephew. His name is Oliver. He's a little white. Yeah, I think he's a, a poodle. Maybe he's not a poodle, but he looks like a poodle, but a, a teeny, teeny, tiny one. Uh, I have too much glue here, clearly. So I'm going to just put my finger in it and then wipe it on the one of my bibs that I have nearby. I have to be honest with you, if you've never thought about this bib system where you just take bibs and you use the Velcro and hang them on the arm of your chair to use for wiping up any kind of mess, I have to be honest with you, since I did that, I've never looked back. First off, I have this little spot of dark. It's like a little dirt spot. And I'm just going to take my white gel pen, rub it across there, and then do this with my finger. And hopefully it covers enough of it up that you don't see it. I have another spot up here, but I'm not going to worry about that because between my ears and the um, the spot that, or the, um, the um, flower wreath, another little spot on his eye that I don't like, her eye. So this time, we're gonna we're not gonna do the bow on the neck like we did with him because he's got a bow tie basically, and she doesn't have a bow tie. She's gonna have a bow in her hair. But I have to do her ears first, and I'm gonna show you how to do ears if you don't have a paper punch. I did use this oval paper punch. I don't know if you can see it in the paper, but here you can see where it was cut out. And then all I did is I trimmed it so that it wasn't that wide. But I figured it would be easy for me to show you how to make um, make one without um, any kind of punch. I lost my train of thought on any kind of punch. And I'm going to make these about an inch and a quarter at their widest point and I'm just going to use my scrap paper and I'm going to draw I'm going to draw her her ear I'm trying not to overlap into the other area and I think I want it to make it a little bit taller than the other one I made and you're only going to do this drawing once Okay, and I can always use the back of this to, um, you know, I don't have to erase that if I don't want to. Now i got to get my scissors. And I'm using my little Tim Holtz snips. This is a heavier weight cardstock, and I think it is easier for me to do the initial cutting when I use these. But, so I'm going to lay this one down. You probably can't see it, but that's okay. You will once I've taken my pencil and lightly traced it. So these are our two ears, and all I want to do is kind of even out my little um, spots where they're just kind of a little bit wonky. So we're going to look like that. They're almost identical. I'm going to use, I have this new Flamingo Kitsch 
Flamingo Distress Oxide. And I think I'm just going to ink with this. I'm just going to ink the whole, the whole of my image. Yeah, right there we're going to put that. That'll be frisky, won't it? All right. If you don't have one of these uh, punches, all you have to do is cut out a little bit smaller oval that would fit inside the white piece of ear. So you don't have to do anything with the scallop. I just thought it'd be fun. It would also be really cool if you'd run this through an embossing folder to give it some kind of dimension. That would be cool. I'm not doing that, but I'm just saying. I could do it. I just don't. I'd rather put my time and energy at this point into her um, neck piece. So let's put our ears together. Now, if at this point you got any pink on your fingers from that ink, get it cleaned off before you play with that white ear. So at this point, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my, I'm going to get this out of here so we don't need a ruler anymore. I'm going to take my gray ink, back to my gray, and I'm going to do the outside of both of my ears. And when you do this, you just want to make sure you really get the edges because you want them to be the thing that sets, sets it apart. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my two ears that I had found a pink color that was this color and I wanted to make it darker. I'd already glued one down and then I decided it needed more dimension so I don't want to risk messing that up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, um, this is Strawberry Slush. It's an old Stampin' Up! ink and it's brighter like that color and I'm going to take a brush. I'm thinking I'm going to use, I have these, it's kind of like a pom-pom brush. Hopefully I'll be able to pop it out and show it to you. Okay, it looks like that. And I never liked these. Lindsay the Frugal Crafter said the reason I did not like them is because when you go to use them, you have to wet them. And I bought mine on, I think I bought them on Amazon or AliExpress, one of those, and I'll put a link for, to them below. When they first came out, they were really inexpensive, but then as other companies started coming out with them, the price on them went up. So, you know, these are the things that happen. So once the top is damp, like this one is, you're going to put it in your ink. And I have, you can see, all I did was a little bit, and it really got inky. So I'm going to just try and do around my edges with this bright, dark pink. I want my ink to go into the center a little bit, but I don't want to mess it up so much that I end up having a super, um, a super dark line. So that's, that was what I wanted. It came out kind of like what I expected, which is shocking for me. Getting rid of my pink ink before I get it all over the place. And again, that was Strawberry Slush. The thing I like about Stampin' Up! inks is that you can almost always, or any old Stampin' Up! products, you can almost always still find them on eBay. And I love that, that once their products are retired, it's not really tricky to find them. Makes me happy because I do like, I like to buy things that are still useful and um, retired products are cheaper. And I'm happy about cheaper. This is the ear that I'm going to bend down at the very top. And the rest of it will be straight. Oh, I had some other thing I wanted to do on both of my bunnies. On the first bunny, I drew this little stitching down the front of its face, nose, down to his mouth. I don't know if I want to do that again, but, um, and I put his nose up a lot higher. I don't know. These are the things I'm not sure I, if I like, but I did see somebody do something with little dots. 
like that. I could have done that with like a um, black enamel, but I decided not to do that. We're ready to we're ready to consider our ears. So her ears, I'm going to glue her ears like this because I'm then going to put, or maybe I'll put them up higher. I don't know. I want her ears to have a little bit of. Um, I want them to have some interest. So I'm only going to glue about maybe an inch from the bottom. I'm going to put that much on both ears. And I want my ears to be um, facing like a little bit off of each other, like that. And I'm probably going to have to use something to hold them in place until they set up, because they are kind of heavy. So let's get our flowers, and we'll start putting our flowers together. Here's what I did. I have a bunch of flower dyes and leaf dyes and ju just about any kind of floral idea, I'm on board. And so what I did was I punched out in pinks and purples and red and orange a bunch of these images. And I'm going to... Ooh, some are still flying everywhere. I'm also going to make sure that they have dimension. I have a piece of foam and come on let's just lay you sideways that way so that we can get you out of the way I'm going to also add some inks to some of these so I'm going to start with the pinks because obviously I still have this pink going and I'm just gonna add pink to the edges I have three sizes of that pink one Let me get my scrap paper again we have these three of sizes of this flower. So I'm going to pounce on some color to the edges. So our next step is we're going to make our bunny necklace. Well, it's not really a necklace. It's, a, it's flowers that will be made into like a headdress. So let's put her hair band on, headdress, we're just going to call it something. I think what I want to do, I cut out some of these um, leaf dies that go like in a pattern like that. And I thought by doing this, I should be able to um, make them uh, work for her, you know, for her to cover it with. They all go in the same direction though, I think. No, this one does. This one goes. All right, so first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna put some glue behind these. Then we're going to add our flowers. And I might add more leaves as I go, but for right now, I'm just about the flowers. And I. I did several layers of flowers like this, and then I didn't like them. So I pulled them apart, so most of them are single layers. I did put glitter on a few of them, like that one, but then, um, you know, then I didn't cover a lot of them with that. So um, I think what I want to do, it all has to do with making them look symmetrical. You know, like I want to have so many on each side so let's see I think I'm gonna do I'm gonna lay them and lay them down all right I think I'm gonna start gluing down oh I also wanted to put foam squares behind some of them because I think they will look better if they're three-dimensional I think I'm gonna put my bow like that cut the end of that off or just move it okay I don't know if I want to. I think I'm just going to wet glue this down because it's already pretty dimensional. I did put some, I don't know if you can see this, I put some glitter on her bow. I'm going to tilt her bow, get it out of her eyelashes. I'm going to have it like right above her. 
care. Then I'm going to put a little foam square. i got to cut this in half again. I mean, the goal is to have this look three-dimensional like it's her hairdressing. I don't know. We're going to call it something like that. Okay, so here she is. I want to quickly show you how to uh, do the belly band for the boy that I didn't show you before. So that's her. She's um, ready for spring. I think she's kind of cute. So then let's go back to the boy. I just want to show you how you need to make the bag and the belly band. Here's what you need to do. You're going to as I explained before, you're going to fold the bag so that this piece goes all the way under there. And that's basically the bag. Then you're going to take, I used, uh, I think a three, three quarter inch strip. It's important that you have a belly band for this rabbit because when you close this bag, there's nothing to keep it closed. And because it's such a um, lightweight bag, you know, it's because it's the bags you get for your lunch, it isn't strong enough to put a Velcro closure on it. It would rip. So the belly band makes it so that you're able to move it up and down, but still keep your bag closed. So what you'd be able to do is you'd take the ears off on this one, and then you would lift this up and you'll fill your bag. Then once you fill it, you can still fold it down at a different level and slide this back on. Hopefully that made sense. It's just a way to make sure that the bag stays closed and still looks like a rabbit. The difference between this rabbit and our girl rabbit is I, uh, with him, I glued all of his facial components together. His eyes, his nose, and his cheeks are all one piece. And you put them up on foam, and then you attach that to your bag. The reason you need to have it up on foam is so that this belly band can slide under there so that your ears are, you know, underneath the eyeballs. Does that make sense? Okay. So here's what you're going to want to do. You're taking a 12-inch strip of your paper, and I just kind of eyeball this, but if you want to score it, you can. And what you're going to do is you're just going to fold it around. Now, you're going to fold one side around, and then, okay, can you see how close this is to that side? Then I want you to move it out about that much. That's probably an eighth of an inch. And then fold in this side. This gives you the ability to... Um, have your bag grow and slide this off and on. Then all you're going to do now is you're just going to put a little bit of wet glue underneath this piece. Make it sure it's lined up on both sides. And what I do is I just get a clip. I take it back off, clip it, and then I leave this aside you know, while I'm doing other things. Then what I did when I made him is I glued his ears onto the belly band, as I said, because that makes it so that the belly band is a component of the bag, basically. And then the other thing that I should have done that I didn't do is I should have made my foam pieces on his eyes go down a little bit further on the eye, because if you, if I would have done that, then it I could have slid my ears under there a little bit further. I'll show you if I can do it better than that now because I kind of mess with it a little bit. What you want to be able to do is you want to be able to slide those down under his eyes enough so that it looks like his ears are part of the real image. So one more thing that I wanted to ask you all about, and that is I'm thinking about doing a series on different types of gift bags. I'd like to know if you're interested in that, because if you are, I'll start doing that right away. I finished both of my bunny bags, and then what I realized was I wasn't happy with the eyelashes on, the, on this one, and I thought the eyes were too 
far apart. So I tore them off, really hacked up the bag, which is unfortunate, but as you know, sometimes these things happen. So then what I did was I cut a whole new set of eyelashes. And what I found was that I do better if I um, do cut them in half, basically. Like there's half and then here's the other half. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of this Beacon 3-in-1 glue on the back of my eyeball and try and come up with um, a new a new plan that I like with my eyelashes because the other plan didn't make me happy, as I said. It made me all kinds of disgusted that I glued it all down and hated it. So here's what I'm going to start with. I want to get my eye balls in roughly the same spot. That looks about right. And then I'm going to glue this half of the eyelashes to that part of the eye. Oh, and let me tell you what I wrapped them around. I'll show you this real quick. I, I cut these by hand and then what I did is I took my pokey tool and I just rolled it around like that. Hopefully you can see this so that they would have a nice curl to them. And then I spread them out with my fingers like this so that they're not all clumped together. The other thing I want to do that I didn't do with the first round with this rabbit bag, my eyes were spaced too far apart. And what I want to do this time is I want to either, I think I want to put them like this so that they're almost on top of each other like that. Um, the eyelashes, the eyelashes uh, make it so that I can hide a lot of boo-boos underneath. So I think what I want to do is put them like that. Oh, I like them so much more now. Oh, aren't they frisky? Just what I wanted. Now I'm happy. I was really not happy with my bunny bag, but now I've got a boy bunny bag that's great and the girl bunny ba bag that has terrific eyelashes. Our niece does eyelashes for a living and I thought it would be really fun to make sure that her bunny has some really serious eyelashes. So I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you give it a thumbs up and subscribe and please tell your friends about me on social media because you know I love that. And thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.